My name is JP Swope. And I'm Amy. Welcome to the Swope Home. Thank you for joining us in a nice social distance. But baby, I'd really like for you to scoot closer to me. We don't need a social distance. I love her. So we've been asked to talk about the offering. And we want to consider a few questions as we do that. Why do you give an offering? Do you give because someone told you at some point that you have to give? And you still feel like you have to give? Or do you fear that you will not receive God's grace or mercy or that your giving is not enough? Here's a scripture we'd like you for you to consider from the Message Bible, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says, a stingy planner gets a stingy crop. A lavish planner gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give. That will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. And that's the key. God loves it when we take time to pause, connect with Him, and find the joy and delight when we give of our talents, our service, our time, and our money. And so from the Swope family, we want to send our love and encouragement to all of you and hope you have a great week. Good morning. And here we are again. We're back in church together. We're worshiping our one true God. We remember one another at times like this. Just for a moment, think of somebody that you always greet on Sunday morning and have grown, drawn close to. Maybe you hadn't met them outside of church, but here at church you've gotten to know them. So think about that person for a moment and, and pray for them and, and maybe give them a phone call sometime in the next day or so just to check on them. As far as folks in the life of our church, uh, so far things are going pretty well. And uh, everybody's hunkered down and, and holding their own, but connected to one another. And that's the theme this morning, is this hope in a pandemic that we are connected. And that we are connected to our one true God, and we are connected to Christ. I, I think the, the cross has so much symbolism in our world today for us as Christians. And I always think of it two ways. You know, the, you have the, the strong part of the cross, the upright, or the, the, the straight, the post, if you want to look at that. And it points upward to God. But then when Jesus was nailed to that cross, his arms were outstretched. And that was his outstretched love towards each of us. So this morning, we are connected firmly and solely and through Jesus Christ our Lord. And with that, friends, our God is faithful. And all the time he is faithful and he continues to be faithful to you even though we do not get the opportunity to meet together on a regular basis. The psalm this morning, Psalm 77, verse 11, 12. I hope you've enjoyed the psalms as we've always considered at least a couple or three verses from psalms to, to get us through this time. I did get a note from someone this past week. They said, I'd love to get your, your notes that they said they were spending time in the psalms. And that's a, a wonderful thing to help you through this time. So Psalm 77, 11, 12 says, But then I recall all that you have done, O Lord. Think about that. All that God has done in your life. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. Amen. And uh, praising God for all that he has done for our very life. Remember your giving. I hope you enjoyed the little brief video that was shown right before this. That was uh, a Swope, J.P. Swope, and his family in Tallahassee, Florida. He, he uh, put that together for his church that he goes to. John showed it to me this past week, and I thought that's very, very appropriate for us in our time and, and for a young family to be a witness to God and, and to us from maybe a thousand miles or so away is, is important to be reminded that our giving, our faithfulness is, is so much a part of our, our worship of our one true God. So remember, your giving is worship. The announcement that I have this morning that soup's going to be back on again. Maybe we're pushing just a little bit, but we think we can do this safely to provide a lunch. It's part of our connection as your church to be connected with you as best we can or others in our community. So if you know someone would like uh, to take home a, a cup of soup like we did last time. And I tell you what, it was some fantastic vegetable soup. And we will do that again this coming Tuesday between 11 and 12.30. You can call and reserve. We'll deliver. If you need it delivered, we'll get it to you somehow. Or you can pick up or, or have someone to pick it up for you. So that's this coming Tuesday. We'll probably start to do that again each week. We hope to, if all things go well. Still not pointed any time we'll come back, but hope to do that. This morning, also, I want to remind you that we'll have Holy Communion here at the conclusion of my message. 
So if you need to round up a few things to have with before you where you're at, pick up some crackers or, or bread or some item, some juice, and have with you as we near the end of my message, we'll, we'll go with that. Okay, prayer. Prayer continues to be our vital connection through the presence, the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, if you want to feel God's presence, just call upon the Holy Spirit to be near to you. In fact, Jesus has come to me, all who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that Holy Spirit is our vital and true connection that we have with Him at all times, in all places, at all moments. So will you bow with me now as we go to our Lord in prayer? God, our Father, we are thankful in a pandemic that, that we as the body of Christ can have a true connection to you. Lord, you are the vine. We are simply the branches called to bear fruit. Lord, I pray you continue to place it upon our hearts to bear fruit in places that we might not have considered to through our own outreach in different ways than we might have in the past. So, Lord, guide, guard our hearts to, be, uh, uh, to have a shield against the temptations that might come to us in loneliness and, and sadness or depression or, or, or being apart from those that we long to be with. So guard our hearts in very special ways. Put on, like, that we, Lord, you, talk, you tell us in your word to put on the full armor that you provide, the full armor of God. And, and Lord, that starts with you, your Holy Spirit, your word. Your, your ways that, that are, continue to be true today. And we, we pray to you, Lord. I pray for everyone listening, our entire church, the, and all those that, Lord, that we come into contact or are connected to in our life. God be with them. Be, have that same connection, Lord. I pray that you're connected to our leaders in our country to guide them as they continue to look at ways we might open up our economy, that we might not rush but do it appropriately. Lord, we pray you, you guide and connection protects those who are serving in every possible way, whether they're working in, the, in their labors or this week we're, we have concern for those in the, the, the meat industry and such, Lord. It it's just seems to go a different direction each week. And, and Lord, I pray you're, you're covering a protection to be with each one. Lord, pray for our nursing homes and those who live there, Lord, and so many... Uh, have been at risk in those places, and, and we do lift them up to you this morning. Lord, uh, we give thanks. Lord, I, I, one, one plus that, that you've laid upon our hearts during this time is what we would ever do without you, have that firm, strong connection through you, our, our living God, the God of Easter, the God of every day, the God of resurrection, the one who wants us to live forward in you. I pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, as we go to you in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, give us this day, give us this week our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And in our loneliness, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the great glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hope in a pandemic. Hope in a pandemic and be connected, or if you're not connected, reconnect. Reconnect in some way pop that I would ask you to do, and I'll get to that vacuum cleaner slide in just a moment. Think of the biblical giants in, in the Bible that, that have, have a connection Think of Moses and how his mother put him into the river and, and then God's coverage over him throughout all that time till got to that burning bush and God asked of him to go forward. And that was all continued, consistent connection with a man named Moses. And then you know, think of David. Yeah, David has his faults. David had his ups and downs. But when Samuel went to Jesse's house and to 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 uh, select that next king of Israel that God had already selected. It was all about a, a true connection. You think of Ruth when she was widowed and alone, and, and she went to her mother-in-law of all places and found the true connection. And, and she said of Na to Naomi, she said, your people now will be my people and your God will be my God. Think of the influence of a connection going forward. And, and our connection does have an influence on others. I, 
Uh, I mentioned in my notes this week that I had my, my uh, dear Uncle Roger pass away uh, uh, last week, uh, on a week ago Saturday, and, and I loved Roger, still continue to love Roger. He, had, he, he was an influencer. He influenced my life in, in, a, in a lot of ways. He was my Sunday school teacher when I was in high school and then going back home for weekends when I was in college. And, and then Roger was just a, a gentle, humble giant, and I've always, always looked up to him. And I know that was it's, that connection started when he was young and his family, and and then it grew out into his very life. And and I I just ha I love that thought of who he was. We think of others as as very connected. You think of the Christian reformers who who had such influence on our faith that we celebrate in our Christian churches today, like like um, Martin Luther. The status quo in his day was not had gone astray and. And he was able to pull that back. And then others came along like Calvin and then Wesley after that. And, and their connection was truly with God. And those men relied on the Holy Spirit in their very life to, to live it out. You think of some of the, the, the strong uh, evangelical heroes. And the first one probably you're all thinking right now is Billy Graham now handed down to Franklin, and, and they've been true to God's Word and true to the grace of God and always preaching grace. And I, you see Franklin now on TV quite often and showing that true connection of, of being connected to God. And then there's the, the secular connections that we see, and sometimes our sports heroes. You know, we have a local connection to Don Mattingly, and, and who is also a man of faith. We, uh, you know, we, you think of those in Hollywood. I can't come up with any Hollywood names because that's not my thing, but there are those in Hollywood that people get connected to. You have those who are connected to their money. First one usually comes to mind of that is Bill Gates. And, and when I was thinking of Bill Gates, I did a little research. Early this year, he was worth like $91 billion dollars. Can't even imagine, can we? I don't know how much it declined there back in March when it, when it slipped back, but did you know that, I had to think about this, and I got my pencil and paper, that old accountant came out in me. I went back and looked at, at Bill Gates, here's your facts for the day, and I think I'm right with doing this, that if he, at $91 billion, if that's his worth, if he earns 6% annually on that $91 billion, if that was his earnings every year, he probably didn't get a stimulus check. Uh, if he got 6% on that, he makes like $173 a second. A second. So, it's not worth it for him to reach over and pick up a penny, is it? Uh, and we, but, you know, I just say that because sometimes we can get connected to those earthly treasures. And like going back to what JP had to say in, in that opening on, on our giving, it's, it's the treasures of the heart. That's where, that's where the heart, our treasures are where our heart is, and that's, that's where God is. And we need that connection in our life. And I especially think we need that. Every person needs that now. You know, when God created us, he, was, he created us. He created Adam and Eve, and then us down the line, he had us in mind as well, as, as spoken of in Jeremiah. He had each one of us in his heart. And he created us so that he might have what? You remember? A relationship with us. God is relational. He's not narrow-minded. He, he, he's got, God is love. He wants the right thing. His law, his ways, his word are still applied today as they did in the very beginning. And will apply at the, on into eternity. That's our connection. Our strong connections can benefit us so much in that way. Now, I, I'm going to throw this up there for, on the screen before I get to Scripture this morning. Because you ever go along, now, and maybe you're at home, and maybe some of your men right now have run a vacuum cleaner, I hope. And maybe if you have, you know, spouses or whatever, nudge them a little bit and say, hey, it's, maybe you need to vacuum or whatever. But have you ever run a vacuum cleaner? And you've run it, and that you've got that cord stretched out and stretched out and stretched out. You maybe have gone into the other room with it. And you've got to watch sometimes what happens. You get it stretched out even to the point where the prongs are almost pulled out of the wall. You know, we can stretch our connection with God almost that way, can't we? And then what happens sometimes? If you really go too far with God, if you really drift too far away, you can pull that connection completely out of the wall. Vacuum, of course, is going to die, but your faith will dry up that quickly as well. And if you've got one of those vacuum cleaners that has that recoiler in it, that cord will 
snap back pretty quickly, and that can certainly happen to us if we get unplugged. We're not counting on that inward personal presence of the Holy Spirit through prayer and through His Word to, to be near to us in our time of need. It can certainly happen. So I urge you not to stretch that cord so much. It's hard on it anyway, and it's hard on you and your relationship. I guarantee you that. Or we can even do this, and I have to admit I've done that. Run my, my skill saw right over my cord. I remember when I was a little boy, Dad, we were working on something at the church one time. He loaned his skill saw to somebody, and Dad's tools were very important to him. And that person zipped right through that cord. Dad wasn't too happy about that. You know, it, 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 it's pretty sudden. It's pretty quick. It can be hardfall as well if you're not careful to have those exposed ones still plugged into the wall. But we, I, I give you that one because it can happen so quickly. It can cut through so quickly. Any little thing can just crop up like that and, and ruin our connection. God wants us to draw closer to Him, especially in times like this. We should draw closer to Him. We must draw closer to Him. And in doing so, we can bear, more, we can bear much fruit. And I want to share with you this passage, one of the special passages of Scripture. I hate it sometimes when I get up here and, and I, I give a message and, I said, well, this is one of my favorite passages. This is a go-to passage. Well, they all are, if you really look at them that way. This is an important one, and it's going to bring us to communion. Jesus said, yes, I am the vine. I am the vine, and you are the branches. That's you sitting in your couch or your chair this morning. You are the branches. Remain Those who, I underlined it, remain in me, and I in them. And that's that true connection. And remember, I... There, there's a passage in Philippians that says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling because I'm at work in you as you are working out your salvation. It takes you and God for that relationship to be true. Remain in me and I will remain in you. And when you do so, you're going to produce fruit. I think of one of the yards I used to mow as a, as a little boy in Algiers. It was Annie's yard and, and she had a grape arbor in her back and I loved it. And, summertime when I would get around to the back and I like those grapes yeah they had seeds in them but they were good and I'd pick those grapes and I'd eat them while I was mowing the yard anyway it was good fruit so we should bear that good fruit for apart from me you can do nothing you can do nothing that's a that's a, a word of even at you can do nothing which means you're going to do no good at that point, anyone who does not remain in me is thrown away like a useless branch and withers. Such branches are gathered into a pile to be burned. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want and it will be granted. That's that connection, isn't it? You like that visual of that? Let me give you a better visual of it now and in, in this. I hope you can, maybe John could zero in on that just a little bit on that and take it off of me and show that vine going up the middle. We don't even get below ground to, sh to show the root system down there where it's getting nourished and, and growing up. But, you know, that's all from God and it grows up to center. And Jesus says that, that center, that trunk, that, that strong part of that is, is that vine. Jesus is that vine, friends. Jesus is that true vine. And then those branches going off of look, look at the branches. There's not a lot of excess on that. There's just those, that, that, those beautiful grapes hanging from it. Dad used to say in a fruit tree that, that we, I have a lot of, I said I loved Uncle Roger. My dad had a lot of influence in my life as well. But he used to say a fruit tree should be pruned back so a bird should be able to fly through it. And that's what this, this grape arbor is here. You can see that it's just the bearing branches off of it are just bearing fruit. There's not excess. It was pruned back. And sometime in our life, we get pruned back too, don't we? Those branches off of the vine, they are us as disciples. I mentioned my Uncle Roger, my dad. There's influencers you've probably had in your life that have caused you and enabled you to bear fruit. But the vine is the center. Whether it was a Sunday school teacher, like I mentioned, or a church camp, or a walk to Emmaus individual that you got close to. But we can, you know, we can get separated from that so easily if we're not careful. Remember that one true vine. Goes on, that connection then is living in us. 
That connection firmly lives in us. And back to Philippians 2, 1 to 4, it says, Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, and I want to encourage you with this verse as you're separated from physical church, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Holy Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, Paul shares this, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, like-minded, Paul said, not like-minded with me or with even those who are your influencers because they were influenced beyond before that by someone else and that connection, being like-minded, have this same love, being one in spirit and of one mind with Christ. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility, Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. That's fruit bearing. If you're humble enough to accept who you are, where you are, what you're doing, and able to then, I think sometimes we need to get over ourselves. The world, I'm not the center of the universe, and the world does not revolve around me. It doesn't revolve around your pastor. It doesn't revolve around you. It doesn't revolve around someone else. It, is God. God at the center. God is divine. We are nourished. We are partakers of everything he has as we are going to partake in just a moment and be connected through the Holy Spirit, through going to Holy Communion. It's a worldwide connection. Even in our Methodist church, when we are at our best in the Methodist church, we are letting the church do the talking, not individuals. We're letting God be at the center, and Wesley established our United Methodist Church that the general conference, that a body of, of God's people would come together to set our structure and our polity, not individuals out there in one way and in direction. That's why we've gotten so divided today. We, mean, we are connected people, but connected to the center being Christ our Lord. He is divine. We are the branches. So as we go to Holy Communion, so if you want to gather your communion elements with you right now, we will begin to consider our connection with God through the Lord's Supper. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of your sins. And remember that, friends, as we go to communion this morning, that you come to Christ. If you repent, seek forgiveness of your sins, God is so, so, so ready to forgive. And in Christ, friends, and in Christ alone, your sins are forgiven. Will you pray with me now, and then we'll do some liturgy before we go to communion. Lord God, we seek you with all our heart, mind, and soul. Your presence is with us, and we are connected to you. And, the, and even through the fruit of the vine that we'll partake of in the cup this morning, it's a symbol of our connection to you. Lord, uh, for the one hearing our words and being powerfully connected to the Holy Spirit this, this morning. Let Lord touch their hearts, forgive their sins, receive them into your loving arms and enable them, Lord, with your power to bear fruit. Lord, be with our church as we commune together. This is one, even in our own homes and our own places and our outreach may be farther than even normal, Lord, that you gather us together as your people. And even one day, as we celebrated a dear person's life yesterday in remembrance of his heavenly home, one day and with you we will commune together through Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll have uh, some words of great thanksgiving. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to God. Blessed are you, O God, who with your word and Holy Spirit created all things, and Lord, you called them good. <laughs> In Jesus Christ, your word became flesh and dwelt among us. Through Jesus' suffering and death, you took upon yourself our sin and death and destroyed their power forever and ever. You, raised, you were raised from the dead, the same Jesus who now reigns with you in glory and poured upon us the great Holy Spirit, making us the people of your new covenant. And on the night before meeting with death, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you and broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, Jesus took this cup and he gave thanks to you. He gave it 
passed it around to the disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of my new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Through this, your sins are forgiven. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us. Oh God, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered before you and on these gifts that in breaking of this bread and the drinking of this juice, we may know the presence of the living Christ and be renewed as the body of Christ for the world redeemed by Christ's blood until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his table forever. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now, if you would partake with me. The body of Christ broken for you and the blood of Christ shared for you. Thanks be to God. God loves you, friends. He'll always be with you. He'll always love you. He's always connected to you. So keep that connection. Don't pull it out of the wall. Be firm in him. Let's pray. God, you've come to us today through a very special way, through the, your body and blood. The great love you shared for us, proving that connection by giving of yourself on the cross to die for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for all you have done for us. Amen. Friends, next week is Mother's Day. We will do our best to remember those dear women in our lives next week and our mothers and all those who have served in so many ways as we come together in church next week. And remember, on Tuesday, we'll provide lunch for you if you would so like. God bless, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.